now we need to understand the zebra board onto the glass you need to see the zebra board onto the glass to check the distortion levels so the image you see on the glass the image you see on the glass all four glasses so this is one way of uh, visual inspection through zebra board for a heat treated glass come now now we are going to this is one way of at the time of unloading we will be checking for the glass having bend or bow you see from this edge to that edge that edge from this edge to that edge you can find what is the bend level inside the glass so in between there is that glass now you see the straightness of the glass glass is having any bend or bow that we can check at a time of unloading and always there should be an interleaving between the glass at the time of stacking now you see if you have three glasses one is of annealed or raw glass one is of hs glass one is of toughened glass by looking at the glass we cannot say which one is which type of glass so one of the one of the traceability to the crossing of the glass is to breakage that is known as fragmentation test if i break an annealed glass if i break an annealed glass it has no direction it has no pattern it can break in irregular pattern and it can harm injuries it can create injuries also so annealed glass will break like this whereas if you say see a hs glass if you see a heat strengthened glass if you see a heat strengthened glass from the impact point the impact at the crack will end at the opposite edge from the impact point the crack will end at the opposite edge which describes it is a heat strengthened glass the same thing the same thing when you see a toughened glass when a impact you can find a small granules of the particles known as fragments you if you see for a 8 mm clear glass if you if i count the particles it should be minimum 40 particles so in this particular thing we have got 89 particles so through breakage pattern we can describe which whether it is a annealed glass or a hs glass or a toughened glass to take all the three from top now we are going to measure the bend in the heat treated glass first the, the sop first we need to measure the the bend should be always measured on the longest side so it is 2100 so next we need to apply setting blocks at the quarter positions so what we are doing is we are giving setting blocks at 500 distance now visually we need to see the bend direction next step is we need to see visually where the bend is so it is towards this side now this is a now this is a straight ruler with the help of straight ruler we are going to measure the bend in the glass 
So this is a taper case. This is a taper case which will determine the bend levels in the glass. I am going to keep the glass straight. Keep the glass straight and I am going to measure the gap or the bend between the glass and the taper case. If you see it is coming less than it is coming 1 mm. So this is how you are going to measure the bend. So it is coming 1 mm less than 2 mm. 1 mm, 1.5 mm it is coming. Here you can see there is no bend. Only this particular point you can find there is a bend of 1 mm. We can check even diagonally also. Cross, cross. Yes, yes, Glass is there okay. No, this is a diagonal measuring. Glass straight. You can see it is less than 2 mm bend we are getting diagonally also. So now we are going to conduct roller wave measurement on the glass. If you see this is a 6 mm SKN 765 glass. As the glass is passing through heating and cooling, the glass will be acquiring certain mechanical properties like roller wave, edge lift, bend and stress. Now we are going to measure what is the roller wave in this particular glass. In order to perform the roller wave, we need to have a roller wave gaze. We need to have a 1100 by 360 glass sample and we need to make sure the glass is kept on the tinted side on top. As the glass is during tempering process, the tinted side is touching the roller, so we will get a roller impression on the tin side. Now we are going to measure the roller wave on the glass. First we need to place the roller wave gaze on the glass. We need to ensure the flatness of the table and we need to make sure that glass is resting flatly on the surface. Okay. First we need to leave 150 mm for edge lift. Next we will be starting the gaze, the movement of the roller wave to be perpendicular to the glass direction. So perpendicular to the glass direction. Now we need to keep the roller wave on the glass surface and we need to drag the roller wave on the glass surface to note down the reading. You can see the value is getting changed. Now it is minus 0 0.2, minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.2, 0. So, so you can see, generally we measure the roller wave gaze. Now the roller wave is equal to, roller wave gaze is equal to the Why peak and the valley. This is permanent one. Actually, white pencil is there, white pencil. White pencil. As the glass is moving through rollers, as the glass is moving through rollers, it will be acquiring a sinusoidal wave and one complete cycle will give me the roller wave. So it is a mixture of base and hardener. So, sorry, it is a summation of peak and the valley. So the minimum value what we get is got is minus 0.2 and the maximum value what we got is 0.00. So the overall roller wave is equal to 0.02 mm. Shall I repeat or okay? Yeah, repeat it. Break it, break it. Okay. The roller wave is a summation of peak and valley. It is a summation of peak and valley. So with the peak value what we got is 0, 0 and the valley what we got is 0 0.02 minus. So it is a summation. So our roller wave is equal to 0 0.02 mm in this particular class. Roller wave is equal to 0 0.02 mm.
now we are going to perform so in order to recap i'm just re, re summarizing i am just summarizing how we are going to measure the roller wave first it will we need to take a 1100 by 360 sample as per the standard en1863 next we need to play we need to take a roller wave gaze the placement of the roller wave gaze to be perpendicular to the glass direction next we need we need to leave a 150 mm on the edges then we need to start dragging the roller wave glass on the roller wave gaze on the glass surface we need to note down the maximum and minimum value the summation of the maximum and minimum value will give the roller wave on the glass the allowable roller wave as per the standard en1863 is 0.3 mm okay now we are going to see the second test that is known as edge lift now we are going to perform the next test that is the edge lift or edge dip the proper the process for this one is first we need to hang 150 mm on the on the uh, flatness surface next we need to take a straight edge and we need to take a filler gaze so we need to keep it the straight edge vertically and we need to insert the filler gauges we need to make sure the coating is on top now i am trying to insert the filler gauges better is to do it from starting no okay now we are going to insert the filler gauge readings into the glass surface whichever scale is not going that will indicate your roller wave sorry edge lift in the glass you see this reading is not going so this is how you are going to measure the edge lift in the glass so it is 0.19 mm so it is 0.19 mm so for tempering basically we'll so to conclude for tempered glass we'll be doing four tests first one is the fragmentation which will determine whether the glass has been he heat strengthened or toughened or annealed second test is the bend or bow that will determine the bend levels in the glass third one is the roller wave that is uh, that is measured for the distortion levels in the glass and fourth one is the edge lift that the roller wave what we get at the edges through tempering process we are enhancing the physical pro we are enhancing the mechanical properties of the glass we are not changing the physical properties of the glass the dimensions width thickness everything will remain same only we are enhancing the mechanical properties of the glass through which we are acquiring strength in the glass now this is one more now there is one more machine known as heat soak chamber generally the glass tends to break spontaneously this is exclusively for a toughened glass because inside the raw material composition there is one impurity known as nickel sulfide the nickel sulfide content gets activated during the toughening process because it has two sets alpha and beta and during toughening process it is unable to complete its alpha and beta state because of that the glass tend to break spontaneously in order to minimize the spontaneous breakage the toughen glasses we are going to send inside the heat soak chamber this works similar to a autoclave where the glass will be heated and hold at 290 degree centigrade and again it will be cooled this is a complete 6 and 1/2 hour cycle
So this is how we are going to send the glasses inside the furnace, inside this chamber. This is an additional process. Whichever glass is having impurity, that will be getting broken inside the furnace, this chamber. The glass having impurity will get break inside the chamber itself. Now if you see there are three glasses, one is toughened glass, one is heat strengthened glass, one is annealed glass. By looking at the glass, we cannot say which one is annealed, which one is HS, which one is toughened. So in order to distinguish which is annealed, which is toughened and which is HS, we have certain testings. One of the testing is what we have in the shop floor that is the fragmentation test. With the fragmentation test, we can say with the breakage pattern, we can say whether it is an annealed glass, HS glass or a toughened glass. When I break a toughened glass, it will break into small fragments. When I break a HS glass, from the impact point, the crack will end at the opposite edge. When I break an annealed glass, it has irregular shape and the pattern can be anywhere. That is, a, but that is a destructive method of testing. If at all a glass breaks at the site level, we cannot go on uh, breaking all the glasses. So in order to avoid breakage, we have one more test known as GASP. This is known as glazing angle surface polarimeter. With the help of this GASP equipment, we can measure what is the stress level induced during the tempering process. Annealed glass will have less than 2400 MPa. Annealed glass will have less than 2400 pounds per square inch PSI, whereas a HS glass will have 3500 to 7500 PSI and a toughened glass will have more than 10,000 PSI. So with the help of stress levels, we are going to measure what is the stress induced in the glass with the help of this gas. Yeah, this is a self calibrated plate. So this is, this is showing this reading or this value is showing it is 12,500 PSI. So indirectly indicates it is a toughened glass. Now we can do self calibration with this equipment. First we will do self calibration, then we will do the testing on the actual glass. This is known as liquid index. So this is known as liquid index. We need to place it on the area where we need to measure the reading and inside if you see there is a prism here is inside at the bottom surface. So when the light passes through this thing, it works, this gas works with the concept of light refraction. When the light is passing on this thing, how it is getting reflected and what is with what angle. Through that angle, we have one chart. This is known as a angle and stress, stress reading chart. So based on the angle, we are going to measure what is the stress induced inside the temper, inside the glass. So first we do self calibration. First we need to switch on the gas equipment. First we need to switch on the gas equipment, then through the lens we need to see, if you see inside there will be a stress lines. We need to match the stress lines with the weight gate and we can adjust through this adjuster. Switch off fan.
Now, if you come, if you say first we first this is now we are doing self calibration. So, when I see any toughened glass or any heat treated glass, I will be able to see the stress lines. So, through this angle and bit gate, I am able to match the stress lines of both the equipment and the glass. You can if you can zoom it in this particular area, this particular angle and the stress lines are colliding at the angle of 65 degrees, 65 degrees. Now, we need to cross verify here. 65 degrees, what is the stress level that is getting induced? So, it is 12517 and as per this thing, it is coming 12520. The stress lines colliding at 64 degree angle, as per the 64 degree angle here, you can see the reading is 12517, whereas we are getting 12520. So, this plate and this equipment means based on the self calibration, we can say that the equipment is calibrated. Now, we see that this thing on actual our glass. First, we are going to measure on annealed glass. In order to make this reading, we need make we need to make sure that the reading is taken on the tinted side. Generally, if you see any glass, the glass will have two surfaces that is known as surface 1 and surface 2. If you put your finger and if you are able to feel that single impression that indicates it is a coating surface. If you are able to feel multiple impressions, that is a non-coating surface. So, for this particular glass, this is a tin side. The same thing we are go, we can even check with the tin side tester also. Just we will place this on this thing, when you are able to see the haziness that indicates it is a tin side. You see here, the haziness is visible. So, bottom one is the tin side. You are able to see the haziness. Yeah, you are able to see the haziness here. Switch on fan or else. You are able to see the haziness here. Or shall I take that side? Yeah. Side. If I am able to find the haziness at the point of contact that indicates my tin side. In this particular case, I am not able to find any haziness or fogginess. The same thing, if I keep on this surface, I am able to find the fogginess or haziness. With the help of tin side tester, we are making sure what is the tin side in the glass. You are not able to find any haziness in the glass surface. The same thing, when I keep the glass in the opposite side. I am able to see the haziness. So, the bottom one is my tin side. So, now I will be placing my gasp equipment on the tester. I will be using a liquid index for better vision, brighter vision. Charging not there, huh? no charging, huh? never used, never used, never used, what using sir, no charge, if no charge means the vision will be very less, ah. okay. What we do is actually I am manipulating here. Come. Now you see this angle, you keep here. If you see when I keep my 
gas on the annealed glass, the reading it is showing is 19 degree angle. It is showing 19 degree angle. Through this chart, I can able to find the stress level in the glass. Gas is 2102 psi or it is equivalent to 14.49 MPa, which indicates the annealed glass has less strength. The same thing we will compare on the heat strengthened glass. Now, same procedure, first we need to identify what is the air side, what is the tin side. For this particular glass, this is the tin side. So, with the help of tin side tester, we are cross verifying. Now, if I, if you see, when I am keeping this, I am able to find haziness on the glass. The same thing, when I rotate, in this surface, there is no haziness there is no haziness. So, this is my tin sides. Now, again I will be applying liquid index. You see here, now the reading it is showing is 43. Now, the reading it is showing is 43 and the 43 the respect to MPA is 39.25. So, earlier we have seen for the annealed glass it was 14.49 MPA. The same thing when I are checking on the uh, heat strengthened glass it is coming to be it is coming to be 39.25 MPA. Now, the same reading we are going to write it for to measure for toughened glass. For a annealed glass, it was 14.49 MPa. For a HS glass, it is 40, 39.25 MPa. Now, we are going to measure the for toughened glass. In order to measure for toughened glass, again we need to check which one is the tin side and which one is the air side. So, this is by looking at the haziness we can make out, we can make out this is the tin side. The same thing when, I, when you check on the other side there is no haziness. So, this is my tin side surface. Now, I will be applying a liquid index. Next, I will be placing this gas and shall measure the reading. So, you can see it is So, you can see it is 67 degree angle, it is matching now. Now, we need to compare with the chart, 67 is equivalent to 99.17. So, this particular toughened glass is having 99.17 MPa. One minute. Huh? So, now we to summarize, to summarize, so when you see a annealed glass, HS glass and a toughened glass, by looking at the glass we cannot say which one is HS, which one is annealed, which one is toughened. We have two methods to differentiate, one is destructive method that is through fragmentation test, we are going to say with the help of breakage pattern and the fragments we will say whether it is a annealed or HS or a toughened glass. But fragmentation test or destructive method, destructive method of testing is not always possible. So, we are going to have a non-destructive method of testing known as GASP. With the help of GASP, during the heat treatment process, glass will be acquiring stress. So, with the help of stress levels, we can make out whether it is an annealed glass or a HS glass or a toughened glass. So, we have checked all the three glasses. We have found that for an annealed glass, the stress levels are 
49 MPa, whereas the HS glass it is 39.25 MPa and for a toughened glass it is 99.17 MPa. So, this is one method of doing stress levels in the glass without breakage. So, through stress levels also we can find make out one more point what is that means annealed glass if you see this is the weakest glass HS glass is twice the annealed glass and the toughened glass is 4 to 5 times stronger than the annealed glass and also HS glass is in between annealed and toughened. Okay.